with gains of about 4%. And we also highlighted Pyramid Enterprises, which has seen some buying interest after uh, underperforming in the last one year or so. So the start was definitely in the red, but that seemed to have picked momentum. Pyramid Enterprise is sitting with gains of nearly 6%. Let's go across to Manav Chopra. Hi, Manav. Good afternoon. Hope you can hear us properly now. What's the call on the index, Nifty or Bank Nifty? Are you taking any fresh bets at these corrections? See, the markets are uh, you know, stuck in a range at the current moment. Uh, when we are looking at the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, there is a non-confirmation from the Bank Nifty index, whereby the Nifty has formed a higher high and has exceeded, uh, tested its all-time highs. We've not seen the same confirmation coming from the banking space. And in the past, or whenever we've seen this formation, and if the Bank Nifty uh, continues and breaks, the support is usually when we see some sort of a profit booking or a short-term correction in the market. Today, uh, Bank Nifty has breached its important uh, daily support levels and is currently trading below those support levels of 31,850-900. So, I sense as long as the index is trading below these support levels, we could see a short-term pause uh, in the uptrend. Uh, this pause could also be having few legs of corrective declines in the near term. Um, I sense in the near term, uh, it's better to be cautious on your short-term uh, trading position at least on the index front there is a lot of stock specific opportunity and stock specific momentum going but on the index front I sense Bank Nifty would witness a short term corrective decline uh, on the lower side there is a possibility of a, a retest of its uh, important support of 31,300 to 31,100 levels uh, looking at the current scenario the medium trend uh, still remains intact but a short term correction is definitely due on cards. Okay, and the next level I think one should watch out will be the 50 DMA, which is somewhere about 31,640 to 650, a Nifty Bank, which with today's fall has already corrected its trading now below the mark of 20 DMA. But Manav, in terms of individual stock ideas then, uh, is there any trade that you're taking? Yes, uh, uh, at the current zone, we've seen a very good uh, uh, action coming from the mid-cap space and the small-cap space. So I have a buy on PVR. In fact, this is one stock which has been a very good outperforming uh, stock in the recent times and after a good sideways monthly consolidation, a breakout from its consolidation zone with the momentum indicators which continues to be in the buy zone uh, and a positive follow on move today definitely indicates uh, a strong bullish bias and structure into this. It's a buy uh, with a stop loss of 1900 on the lower side for an upside target of 1985. My second buy call is on JM Financials uh, from the small cap. Um, in fact, this is one stock which after a good uh, year of uh, uh, consolidation uh, uh, pattern that we've seen at the resistance of 97.98, it had uh, decisively breached yesterday and today, uh, you know, there has been a good positive follow on move. The most encouraging part for this stock is the uh, volumes. Uh, we've seen a very strong uh, aggressive volumes into this stock and which further confirms the bullish structure and validates the bullish breakout. So even at the current zone, we see a very strong momentum rally which is likely to unfold into this uh, a stop loss of 102 for JM Financials on the lower side for an upside target of 115. All right. I uh, just want to pull up Indusin Bank. I think that's now sub 1400 uh, from levels of um, uh, you know the highs that we were trading at. I think 1515 yesterday's session. So it breached 1500, yeah. 1575. It breached 1400. I think it's come back up, but 1402 still under five and a half percent for today's trade. The market is is being uh, harsh on the stock, uh, you know, since it's reported uh, those slippages, 76% higher on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. I mean, 4.5% of the total loan book is not a, not, <laughs> not, not a small number, so I guess the market is not uh, clearly liking what they saw with regards to the reportage. But uh, on the stock, will you f put up some of the housing finance companies as well? I mean, uh, Indible's housing finance for one is at about 312. The last few weeks of sorts, has been absolutely flatline. There's no movement since the time, since the month of October, where it actually went sub 200. From there, it bounced back, and now the stock's at about 311. No, not much activity in the last uh, week, 10 days or so. Uh, LIC Housing Finance as well. We've seen a pickup from uh, lows of about 416 to 471, and then from there, uh, it's come down as well. And, and the rest of the pack too. Uh, would you be a trader in any of these names, Canfin Homes, uh, Manav, uh, LIC Housing Finance, uh, India Bulls Housing Finance? 
see uh, uh, if you are looking uh, of uh, this sector you know this uh, we have seen a good amount of consolidation happen in the lic housing finance at least in the near term perspective the prices face a stiff resistance at 450 to 460 on the upside and it's on the verge of an upside breakout the only thing uh, which is very well placed for lic on the current zone is that you know there has been a very strong buying that has taken place on the weekly perspective on the lower side 440 and 445 would act as a very strong support and a cushion i sense in the near term uh, if there is a breakout above the 458 levels you could see the next uh, upside rally towards the levels of 475 also uh, when we are looking at the charts for the canfin homes um, in fact this stock has uh, witnessed a series of decline from its recent peak and overall has been an underperformer recently and with the weekly breakdown which is confirmed in canfin home if i have to choose one i'll definitely look to initiate long positions in lic housing finance All right, and Canfin Homes obviously has uh, news attached to it, and that's why the stock today session down about two two point seven percent. Canada Bank has shelved its plans of divesting Canfin Homes, the thirty percent stake that it holds in the stock, uh, in in the company rather, three hundred and seventy six on that one. Yogesh Mehta of Yield Maximize is joining us on the show as well. Yogesh, one percent. The low of the day was some. It slipped by the way below the mark of twenty two hundred itself, two one nine four or something like that was the low. It comes out with its earnings day after tomorrow, and suddenly you've seen some buying coming in in the last ten to fifteen minutes, which has led to that recovery for Nifty as well. Twelve thousand three fifteen up for Nifty. We've recovered majority of the losses. Manav, come in here. Technically, the move on TCS. Would you buy this one? Yes, in fact, we've seen a good move coming from the IT space and TCS. Uh, recently, after a good three days of decline and consolidation, move have again bounced from its daily support levels and a close above 2200 levels would definitely be quite bullish. I sense in the near term, the stock uh, faces series of resistance at 2250 to 2260 on the upside, and uh, once if we see a break above those levels, uh, you know, TCS could see a swift rally of. 8 to 10 percent, which is a very big uh, 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 number for uh, uh, um, a stock like this, which is a heavyweight on IT space, and also having a, a decent weightage in the Nifty. So uh, we need to see a, uh, at least a short-term rally that one trader can expect is close to the levels of 2260. And uh, uh, post that, you know, we, uh, one can should one should definitely look to continue and trade uh, this stock for a medium-term perspective. At the current levels, a stop loss of 2200 can be placed on the lower side. Okay, 2200 uh, should be your stop loss if you're trading TCS. A very quick view, fundamentally as well, Yogesh, since it comes out with its earnings on Friday, the premium multiples that it has been commanding. We've seen the slowdown in the BFSI vertical, which is one of the main verticals for majority of these IT companies. We've seen for Infosys now, digital contributes nearly 40% of the overall uh, revenues. Uh, Uh, so far, I think first half revenue growth has not been that great from TCS. Is this something you look at closely, and is it a preferred pick in the large cap IT space? Uh, hi, Namni. Uh, in TCS, uh, preferably, I will say that uh, uh, the Q3 numbers, uh, the Q3 numbers are expected to be hardly uh, one one and a half percent kind of a constant currency in terms of dollar terms uh, growth. But uh, better utilization, I know, depreciation will drive uh, some margins uh, on the higher side. Plus, uh, 130 to 150 BP, uh, bips would be advantage over uh, GBP uh, depreciation exposure. So that will drive margin. I think 27 is the seasonality quarter where EBIT margins will remain there, even third. Quarter last year was 27, 27.1%. So overall, 8,300 or 8,300, uh, 400 kind of uh, profit would be there, and uh, with 87 to 88 uh, rupees uh, 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 uh,
decent quarter and I think aided by the base you might well see a well see a decent performance this quarter too. So the numbers from persistent might be really good. <laughs> One stock that's just gone berserk is Avanti Fields. It's of, of course trading at 52 week highs, but look at the move. It's up 9% and it's trading at the day's eyes on a million and a half shares traded. Just some remarkable moves out here. Um, yeah, we, we, we know of volatile stocks and, and we know of trending stocks. And to go somewhere stock. close at about 580 yeah. from there. The move has been pretty phenomenal actually. A one way move for Ravanti feeds. Just one or two days in between when the market itself looked a bit jittery. That's the time you saw a little bit of a pullback but that too was bought into in a big way. The last one month the stock's been up about 34. I think the other two shrimp players have also gone up. Waterbase and Apex Frozen Food. All three of them now trade at 52 week high. So the rally has been quite good in the last three months Apex has doubled at current levels and now water base is also up 65 percent. I want to just uh, there's, a, there's a, a stock exchange notification that's come in on Yes Bang. The stock those come off from the highs of the day. I think it's up just about two and a half or percent now but uh, they were short customers about the li bank's liquidity and stability. Uh, yes Bank's capital adequacy ratio is comfortably above regulatory requirements. All efforts are being made to financially strengthen the bank even further. So just some bit that has been put out on the stock exchanges and notification coming in from the bank to assure customers. The stock price now sub 40 rupees, 39.7 on Yes Bank. Would you trade this stock at all, Manav? Uh, can you please... Uh, yes, uh, bank. yes Bank. Uh, see, uh, looking at the charts for Yes Bank, in fact, uh, it has been a complete underperform in the markets and most importantly, you know, the, it has been, it has seen a lot of move based on the news events. The current structure is very weak for the Yes Bank and even though if we see any short term bounce or any bullish candlestick formed, uh, we, we are currently uh, definitely not recommending any uh, uh, investing or trading Yes Bank uh, uh, to any of our clients uh, for a simple reason that you know it has been quite volatile and in fact we have seen the stock uh, also breach to its important weekly support levels. So the next uh, support for the stock is uh, placed on the levels of 34, 33 and I will not be surprised to see the stock drifts on the lower side. Uh, so for me it's a completely avoid even at the current zone. Alright and since we were on the topic of Avanti feeds, uh, Ruchit, would you buy this stock or any other, any of the other names that we spoke about, Apex, Frozen Food, Waterbase, would that interest you? I think Avanti feed, uh, the, uh, the short to medium term trend is still up. We have been consistently witnessing a high top, high bottom structure. But just to take a fresh trade over here, the risk reward will not be that much favorable because the stop loss would come below 600, which is you know more than uh, you know, 12 to 13 percent from current levels. So I would recommend that if any existing long portions are there, they could continue to ride the trend. But uh, no, not not a levels where fresh buying should be done. In case if there is any dip, then on dips one can look to uh, certainly add it to the portfolio. Uh, water base is looking positive. Uh, relatively because uh, no, the stock uh, has given a breakout above 153, 154 which was the earlier resistance. So keeping a stock below 153, one can attempt a long over here for targets of 175. Okay, let's get in those closing comments then and uh, closing strategies by today's sell tomorrow uh, ideas from both the technical experts. Rushit, I'll keep it with you first. What's your recommendation? I think cement would be the space where we could see resumption of the movement. So ACC would be my pick for BTST. One can go long at current levels with stop loss below 1490 for target around 1550. Manav, what about you? Yes, my buy is on escorts. In fact, the prices have seen a very good breakout on the weekly charts. And auto as a pack has seen a very good momentum rally in last couple of trading sessions. So uh, the stock has important support at 674, a stop loss of 672 for escorts an upside target of 695. Okay, that's escorts for you. A buy rating there. Pull up Triveni Engineering. Not sure if some news has come, but that too has seen a sudden spike in the last few minutes of trade. Yep, that's up about 12 to 13 percent. Um, also want to pull up Berger Pains, by the way. Remember in the last hour of trade yesterday, the stock rallied about three and a half to four percent. It's up another three percent at the highest point of the day. Um, Yogesh, uh, crude prices have cooled off. They're at some four or five week low. Uh, suddenly these paint companies, the old sensitives are back in focus. You've got uh, Asian Pains, uh, Berger Pains, both rallying uh, in, in, in the last few trading sessions. Any expectations on the earnings trend? Multiples are really high. They're expensive companies but would you buy them 
no need uh, of course both are expensive companies but i think uh, the way crude has corrected and now it seems a, li a very uh, limited scope for again to spike back to 70 so overall the quarterly earnings which will come for q3 uh, q4 uh, q4 will be having uh, some kind of a relaxation and relief uh, so i believe that uh, both the paint companies will be equally in a sweet spot for the timing at least irrespective of valuation right now uh, in the large cap especially uh, everybody's uh, every uh, the money is chasing growth so this asian paint will have a has a largest market share and the second one is the budget paint so i think equally both has got potential uh, but asian paint will have a limited upside because of the capital infusion will be from the institution side where Berger will be a darling for few of the AMC and the, uh, and the HNI investors. So I believe that yes, the budget pain has got some upside, but uh, may, uh, maybe 8 to 10 percent uh, if you look at Lavania perspective and in Asian pain would be 1900, 1950 would be on the higher side. But uh, yes, uh, on, a, on a, as a capital preserver plus a little bit of appreciation, both looks uh, attractive. Uh, Yogesh, we leave it at that. Thanks much for taking the time out and being with us and giving us your perspective. Appreciate your time. Um, just last Later. couple of minutes left, two or three stocks, a bit of a rapid fire that I want to uh, do out here because these stocks are very active. ITDC is up about 14%. It's not a very well-tracked stock, I know, but Richard, would you pull up the charts and see how does it look? Yes, after a corrective phase, it seems to have uh, you know, resumed a uh, move, so it can go higher up to 375, 380. Uh, well, if anyone has existing long portion, then we can hold with stock below 292. Okay. Mana, a couple of names on the uh, on the steel stroke infra space which are doing well. One of them is GMR Infra up in the session today has been a rather strong stock of late. The other one is Jindal Stainless which gained about 8-9% two, three days ago and is consolidating at these levels. Both of these have spiked. See, uh, looking at the charts for GMR, it's very well poised. In fact, we've seen a very strong monthly and weekly breakout post that you know the stock has witnessed a corrective decline but eventually we expect much more ILX coming for GMR Infra we see uh, at least an upside target of close to 27 and 29 for Jindal Steel uh, uh, yes uh, you know the prices have seen a consecutive series of advances it has important support at 170 so as long as 170 holds we expect this momentum rally to continue on the upside for a short term upside target one can expect uh, 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 targets of close to 200 and 205 okay Richard very quickly uh, one more stock Ramkrishna forgings it's gained quite a bit in the last few minutes of trade how does it look on the charts so you know, after a long time it's uh, you know, indicating a breakout above its 200 day moving average 398 is the resistance which if uh, crossed in tomorrow's session we could see a momentum towards 430 Let's start wrapping up the markets. Gentlemen, stay on. We'll take in some closing thoughts from you. But this is uh, pretty similar to what we saw yesterday in the sense the difference between the Nifty and the Bank Nifty or the Sensex and the Bank Nifty. Today, all three indices are in the red, but the Nifty Bank is down about 0.7%. Yesterday, the Nifty Bank was down in the red and Nifty and the Sensex and in the green. So the underperformance of the Bank Nifty or our performance on the downside continues from the Nifty Bank. The broader markets probably a lot more well behaved and pretty similar again to yesterday's session, just more pronounced because Yesterday they were up about 0.7%, today they are 0.9%. That's very interesting the kind of gains that we've seen at the broader end of the spectrum in this month uh, of January. Uh, let me talk about the large caps and the index movers first before I end it with the need for what's happening at the broader end of the spectrum. Yes, Bank 3.5, Hero Motor Corp gains, Tata Motors does as well as Maruti and M&M, so autos have had a good day. Titan, remember it was a stock mentioned on Bloomberg Edge at the morning at 8.50 today and that stock is up about a percent and a half, Z is up about a percent, so good going there. What's not done well, Indusind Bank, two days of underperformance and some big sell-off out here in Indusind Bank. We're seeing Wipro correct a bit too in the session. There's weakness in SBI uh, in the session today. Infosys has corrected uh, too, uh, as well as Tech Mahindra, so save for I think TCS, the other IT names have corrected quite a bit. And Axis Bank, amongst the banking names, in addition to SBI, is the other weaker hand at the financial names today. Indusin, SBI and Axis, amongst the top losers in the banking space. So I think there's a bit of a, bit of a recovery for the HDFC twins, as well as Bajaj Finance today. But the broader end of the spectrum, no need. Uh, no complaints at all. Not at all, Neeraj. And there was outperformance right from the word go, vis-a-vis -vis the frontline indices. But remember, they too have closed off the day's low. So we wiped out majority of the losses for the front 
frontline indices as well. But talking about the broader markets, mid-cap index is closing with gains of 1%. There were a lot of movers, a lot of pockets which were active in today's session. So let me start off with the insurance companies, New India Assurance and as well as GIC RE. Both of them gained and the gains were pretty strong. As you can see, New India is closing with gains about 8 to 8.5%. 8 and GIC Assurance too are closing with, uh, sorry, GIC is up about 3 to 3.5%. 3 and, and metal stocks, companies like NMDC and JSPL were in focus. Of course, JSPL has a earring, so that's the reason why it was active. But NMDC also gaining about 4 to 4.5 percent, and JSPL closing around the levels of 180. Berger Paints, which rallied in last hour of trade yesterday uh, by about 4 percent, today there was incremental buying coming in. So follow on buying 3 percent higher, 544, 555 is the level where this one's closing. And the gas distribution companies were active owing to the coverage which came from a brokerage house, Credit Suisse, where they are pretty positive on the entire space. You got MGL, you got IGL, both of them were your top FNO gainers as well. So MGL closing the day with gains of 8% and IGL also rallying about nearly 5%. Pyramid Enterprises was one of the other stock which has been a laggard in the last one year, but there was some renewed buying which came back. Maybe 1537 is the level where that one's closing. And we just highlighted for you Trevaney Engineering. There was some trade which happened in the last half an hour of 45 minutes and this one's closing with gains of 12 to 13%. Where you had gainers, you ought to have a couple of losers as well and these are your result reactions. So Bandhan Bank which came out with the numbers, asset quality I guess disappointed the street and look at that, 5% lower for the day, closing below the mark of 500. Sriram Transport, I think due to some MSCI reject as well in terms of weightages, this one fell intraday yesterday and was down another 3% in today's session. Mothers and Sumi has been underperforming in the recent past. Couple of brokerage houses have been cutting down the target, so 2% lower here. And Adani Green, an outperformer of last year, has been locked in lower circuit now for the fourth straight session. Remember the lower circuit for this one is 5%. So today also the stock clo is closing with cuts of 5%, Devina. All right, so no record close today. <laughs> for a change, <laughs> we've got uh, a 21 point dip on the index, uh, but uh, you know, it, it's really not an issue right now considering the pace at which we've moved up. It's still a strong closing, yeah. we've recovered nearly 60 points from yeah, the day's low. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so that's 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 uh, some strength that's back into the market. TCS doing the heavy lifting in the afternoon, uh, 12,340 on the nifty, the banks uh, losing more, so 230 in the last few days has been a story of underperformance from the nifty bank. Coming to individual point contributors and um, you know like we said TCS did the heavy lifting towards the end but it was Marathi Suzuki also that contributed a bit not much in terms of gains more losses so Infosys causing the drag and HFC Bank and Reliance the two heavyweights there too uh, uh, totally losing about eight nine points Hmm. And look at the market breadth and that's been uh, one positive area at least in the last few sessions. So when we opened it was in favor of the declines but towards the end in the last hour or last hour and a half we did see more buying coming into the broader market. So the ratio uh, as you can see it's just about 2 is to 1 in favor of the advances. I also want to pull up India Wix. I guess for majority of the session it was trading with some bit of gains. Uh, yeah, it's still closing with gains of about 1%. And volumes, uh, don't know whether we've got a, a number in line 30, 36. 6,000 wow. slightly higher yeah. 32 33 is what we've been seeing on the futures and options side also uh, this is actually um, you know tomorrow being the weekly, weekly expiry, expiry so it's picked yeah, up yeah it's picked up a bit but uh, the BSC cash actually is also a, a decent enough number 3800 odd crores on, on that one uh, closing comments from our technical experts come to you Mana first what levels uh, what stocks you're going to be watching out tomorrow See, for tomorrow, I think it's very important to note that uh, the, the low made by the bank nifty today is going to be act as a very key pivot support for the markets going forward. And uh, since I had mentioned that, you know, the bank nifty has made a non-confirmation as it has not confirmed to all-time highs confirmed by the nifty, it definitely indicates a negative breadth. And usually such intermarket leads to some sort of a corrective decline. So a uh, decisive break of today's lows would definitely confirm that setup and eventually we would expect once if that is breached, uh, which uh, looks like a, a, a high high probability event, uh, we could see a near term decline towards its recent support of 31,800. On the upside, we also witnessed aggressive call writing, uh, which took place at the zone of 32,400 to 35,500, and that too indicates uh, that you know the upside seems to be capped. On the immediate front, 31,900 to 32,000 would be the resistance. So, for the near term perspective, at least on the index front. It's important to remain light or be on the short side with your mentioned stop losses. Uh, 
on the stock specific front there is a lot of action that has been witnessed in the mid cap small caps i think that would be the uh, sector to be in uh, avoid large caps at least for next couple of weeks all right uh, ruchit what about you the broader trend for the market i think still remains positive because there are no signs of reversal yes the intraday declines are there because the large cap names have not been you know showing any kind of uh, no uh, any kind of swift up moves so i think uh, you know the any kind of such intraday declines again towards 12250 to 12300 range should be used as a buying opportunity keeping a stop loss below 12200 and in near term we are expecting 12400 to 12500 range in nifty outperformance is definitely there from the mid cap and the small cap space the so stock specific kind of opportunities would continue to uh, you know, provide some good trading opportunities and one of the sector that i would uh, you know highlight and at closing is the nifty auto sector you know the stock this sector has uh, this index has uh, surpassed its previous swing high of 8340 and i think so for tomorrow and maybe next one or two trading sessions auto stocks and auto ancillary could be the names to focus on we will watch out for them gentlemen both of you thanks so much for joining in and giving us that perspective really appreciate your time today thank you You know, I was listening to Jeff Bezos. Two or three things that he said stood out for me. Really, one was that he said that Amazon India will stop all plastic in deliveries by June, June 2020 or 2020. Let's give six months grace, but by end of 2020, all plastic for uh, deliveries will be stopped. Uh, he said that the Earth is doing a lot. So I, I think what I made of it was that all the good things will happen on Earth in the future. and all the experiments and polluting things will happen on other planets that's what his ambition <laughs> yeah. is that and maybe some other high net worth leaders could join in he wants to move to space to he space, said to space yes so that was the other interesting yeah. bit and from an indian perspective he mentioned uh, and maybe we'll toss to that as well uh, here are what he said that the alliance between us and india would be the most important alliance of the 21st century and that the 21st century will belong to india wow that's great news <laughs> well here out as uh, we wind up the show Jeff Bezos